Well, aren't you an investigative reporter? Why don't you investigate the facts? We always appreciate journalistic advice, even critique from the people we investigate. That I, I think that you are a horribly unethical man. And we've gotten plenty along the way. I want to ask you just a couple questions. Sure. Uh, Last summer, we wanted to question San Benito City Manager Fred Sandoval because we discovered he didn't live in San Benito like the city charter required him to. He wasn't even trying to move. And we apparently struck a nerve when we brought it up. We wanted to know about you moving to San Benito because you've been the city manager for a while. Your house is not for sale. No, it is not. Okay. Are you planning to move? No. Never? Never. Sandoval tried to convince us that state law said he didn't have to move. Do you know that it's the charter violation of local government code 150.021 that doesn't require me to, li to live in the municipality that I'm working in? Fancy government talk, but Fred's clearly no lawyer because that wasn't true at all. It wasn't exactly a Chamber of Commerce moment for Mr. Sandoval because he's the guy that's supposed to convince people to bring their money and their investment to the land of Osaka. It turns out the city manager isn't just an angry with power public official, he's a sneaky with power one too. So is the entire San Benito City Commission. How much transparent do you want? Early voting for the November election in the Rio Grande Valley won't begin until next week. But we got a look at the ballot San Benito voters will see when they get inside the ballot box. It includes a special election to change the city's charter. And looky here, Proposition D, or what we call the Fred Sandoval Amendment, a charter change that doesn't help a single resident of San Benito. Just one guy who doesn't want to live in the city where taxpayers pay him to work. But when exactly did the San Benito City Commission vote to put that proposition and four others on the ballot? Because we can't find it mentioned anywhere in the agendas or minutes, and we looked. Those are the regular meeting of the City Commission, City of San Benito. It's uh, August 6, 2024. The time is uh, 5.33. But here's when it happened. August 6th of this year, and it was just weeks after our Arrogant with Power video took the valley by storm, during what's called the consent agenda of the city commission meeting. A consent agenda is where city commissioners lump all the non-controversial items, routine stuff, routine contracts, appointments, they lump it all into one big vote, one vote. Item two on that consent agenda that day was consideration and possible action to approve order number 2024-0806-001 for the November 2024 Charter Amendment Special Election. The ordinance was not put online 72 hours in advance of the meeting, and it would have been the only place you could find out what exactly the Charter Amendments were, because they didn't say a word. Okay, so I've got a motion by Commissioner Goodman. Do I have a second? A second. Okay, a second by Mayor Potem Galvan. All in favor? Aye. Any nays? Motion passes. But there was clearly nothing routine about the Sandoval Charter Amendment. Even he knew it was controversial at the time. He had gone to the newspaper in town to try to explain why he was so angry that day with us. Never. Never. Then there is Amendment C on the ballot, which is trying to change the charter to take power away from the people and give it to the politicians. Now, if a city commissioner in San Benito resigns and there's less than a year left in their council term, a special election is held. The change would allow the city commissioners to handpick the replacement. Maybe they'd appoint one of their kinfolk. And then there is what we're calling the Carol Sanchez Amendment. Proposition B. Sanchez was thrown off the city commission, you may remember, this spring when she moved out of the city with weeks left in her term. You gotta love the way Sandoval reacted back then. Is this the same charter that applies that also says the city manager has to live within city limits? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so are you preparing to move here? Uh, it as soon as I get my contract, as soon as I get my contract, you know. Fred obviously changed his mind. Never. Never. But we say that vote in August that put those controversial ballot changes on the ballot was illegal. 
a violation of the very charter the commission was trying to change. Maybe they need to read it sometime. They can vote to put a new amendment for a charter election by ordinance, but you're required to have the entire text so the people who live in the city can know it's happening. I bet they didn't because they wanted to keep it a secret. People are just completely unhappy at this point in time. Sanchez is now supporting a recall of the entire San Benito Commission she used to sit on, a petition drive now in its final stretch. We agreed to help that growing group of citizens who are saying enough is enough. At the end of the day, you know, it, it's up to us to speak up and, uh, you know, the power of the pen, right, we can vote. You'd understand if Julian Rios didn't have time to try to take back his government. The former chairman of the EDC is trying to raise funds as his young wife battles another round of cancer. My wife tells me uh, to keep fighting, to keep doing what's right, and it, it keeps us busy. It keeps us focused on something other than cancer you know um our kids are are the next generation and i have to uh, make sure that they're good now the revelation that the city commission snuck through potential changes to the city charter it's proof the recall is required for a group of politicians who are hungry with power and willing to ignore the embarrassments of recent months to get more power. This being sneaky is, is ridiculous. Petition organizers say only a few reasons have been cited for not signing. One is the fear of retaliation by the San Benito School Board. The school district is one of the biggest employers in town. After our last video, Brian Rivera of Texas Hometown Solutions called us to help. He sent folks to San Benito to collect petitions. I had to talk to a lady because she was so scared of, you know, signing, not because she didn't believe in it, but because of retaliation. And so she was afraid to sign it. We have a returning guest tonight, the one, the only, Josephino Consulting. I went back on the Mickey G podcast the other day to send a message. Don't even think about it. If anyone calls you and tells you not to sign that petition or tries to scare you or threaten your niece's job, I want you to call me and I will personally come down there and I will chase them down the street. We've opened an investigation into nepotism at SBCISD. After Mayor Garrett got elected, one of his brothers got a sweet job there as the IT director. The Housing Authority? They're hiding the investigation into another one of the mayor's brothers for alleged sexual assault. And of course, yet another brother is on the Housing Authority board the one that assaulted me during a recent trip to City Hall. Nepotism is what first brought us to San Benito. That's funny. A charter amendment to fix that nonsense isn't going to be on the ballot. Of course, that would have likely been brought up for discussion by the public who live under this hungry from power bunch if they knew it was happening. Some San Benito residents who want the mayor recalled and Councilwoman Deborah Morales too have a little more sympathy for a councilman like Tom Goodman, but he has failed to publicly call out the nepotism or the mismanagement. Yes, I can't. Don't you fucking touch me, man. Hey, hey, hey. Even the conduct of the mayor's family. I understand what you're saying about that very clearly. But you're not willing to do it. I um, I have to navigate a uh, small town politics and try to help to improve it and make it do better. Goodman was at that August meeting this year when council simply snuck through details of a special election, major changes to the city charter without uttering a single word about what they wanted to change. They didn't do anything. Man, when you sit there and do nothing, you're doing just as much of an injustice as the people that are doing this. Hundreds have already signed the petitions, even before this double cross. It's why we offered to help folks in the first place try to take their town back. Do it for your kids, man. You know what? Right. Do it for your kids so they can see mom and dad um, saying, you know what? This is America, by the way. Right. And in America, we get to petition our government. It's kind of like what the, the original dudes we're all about. Petitions are available to sign at Chewy's Custom Sports on Highway 77. They must be turned in by Friday to the city secretary. Wonder if she'll call the cops again. Fight, 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 San Benito. Fight, fight, yes, fight.